This is AP exam 1974. A pendulum consisting of a small heavy ball of mass M at the end of a string of length L is released from a horizontal position. When the ball is at point P, the string forms an angle theta, and it's on the picture, right? Um, with the horizontal as shown. In the space below, draw a force diagram showing all the forces acting on the ball at point P. Identify each force clearly. I'm going to do it right here on, um, on my diagram so I can do solutions right there above B. So if this is my point B, Maybe I'll do it here and then I'll erase and then redraw over there. So if this is my point B, where's the ball is, point P, um, there is tension and there is MG. So I'm going to call this MG and there is tension. For AP exam, make sure your forces don't look like this. On AP exam, make sure that your forces touch the point that they ask you to apply the forces to. So if this is the center of the mass of the object, these are the forces acting on the object. So let me redraw them here. So this is tension and this is mg. I'm going to erase this here so I don't need it anymore. And um, this is all you have to do for A, nothing more. Um, but there is more than just that. If I do the horizontal component and the vertical component of T, so here is T, let me move my T to the other side. So here is T, and I have, or maybe I'll do this. Here is the vertical component of the vector T, force T, for tension, and here's the horizontal component. And because this line is parallel to this one, and this is their transverse, this line, this angle is the same. So this becomes T cosine, and this becomes T sine theta. So, this is more for B. Determine the speed of the ball at point P. Um, if this is L, let me do it in this color. If this is L, if this is L, then this length right here is also L to the maximum, like minimum point, to the minimum point where it can go. So when it is all the way at the bottom, it would be the minimum point. Um, so if that is L, then from this triangle, from this triangle, this is L sine theta then what's left between here and here is L minus minus L sine theta. So this part is L minus L sine theta. So I can use conservation of energy to solve the B part and I'm gonna do it right here above. So this was my answer for A, but you never draw it. You never draw your graph on the picture that they give you. You would do your graph right here. You would do your attention. You would have MG. Um, I just need space for B right here. Um, so I can do potential and kinetic energy. So my potential energy maximum. So right here at this point, I will have potential energy at maximum compared to this point. Right here I'm gonna say this is my zero potential energy. So right here all the way at the bottom I'm gonna assume that my potential energy 
p is equal to zero. So my potential energy maximum um, is going to be transferred to the potential energy at p plus the kinetic energy at p. And I need to find velocity of the ball at p. So potential energy at um, all the way maximum is m, g, and l. And potential energy at p is mg. I'm going to take l out from this expression. And what I have is 1 minus sine theta. And plus 1 half mv squared. And that this v squared is the velocity at p. Now, if I plug in all my numbers, well, let's solve it for vp first. I would have to multiply them by, um, I have to show you math, I'll multiply them all by 2. So I have 2 mgl, and I subtract the other mgl, 1 minus sine theta. And I had to times it by 2 as well before I subtracted it. And equals to mvp squared. Um, this mgl and this mgl would be taken out. So if I take that 2 mgl out. So if I take 2 mgl out from here, what I have is only 1. If I have to, if I take two mgl from over here, what I have is one, and then this minus minus this minus gives me plus sine theta, and that equals to mvp squared. Um, both sides of the equation have m, so I can cancel m. And 1 minus 1 cancels. So what I have here is 2 gl equals to v squared at p. Um, so vp is equal to the square root of 2 gl or n the sine theta. 2 gl and the sine theta. So that would be my um, solution for for b, the velocity at p, and the square root. And I will switch to a different page to do c. So for c, we haven't done it this way in the classroom, so I really want you to see this example. Um, I'm gonna break, I'm gonna make my y coordinate this way, and x coordinate this way. And if you remember, um, I told you in the classroom that if you have acceleration, and in this case, you do have acceleration, centripetal acceleration, um, you have to choose your axis with the acceleration. So in my case, I have centripetal acceleration going this way. So A, C. So because of that, I have my axis. So if your MG is going this way, then this is your um, X axis, projection and this is your y-axis projection and let's think about the angles this angle is theta this is 90 degrees so this one is 90 degrees if I drop here a line and that makes nine degree degrees over here this is theta and this angle is 90 minus theta so that one is 90 minus theta because um, let me do this in this because if this angle is 90 
and if this angle is 90 and this angle is theta in this part the whole thing is 90 degrees and if this is theta then this one is 90 minus theta now i'm going to come back right here so if this is 90 degrees and this is 90 minus theta then this one is theta you can pause here and go over this explanation one more time to see if you understand this um, so if I have projections of my forces so this is my theta um, so if I have projections of my forces on the x and new x and y coordinates um, this would be my new x this would be my new y then I would have this one is my x projection of mg and my y projection of mg and i'm gonna move this side to the other side let me move my mg to the other side so it's not on the way so my mg is gonna be here and i'm gonna move my y projection to the other side to make this angle perpendicular and this is your theta and this is your mg then that gives you mg cosine theta and mg sine theta so now i can write my um my system of equations so I can do my axis or let's do we probably don't need the axis we only need the y's um, in this case let me rewrite this one let's see if we can do the whole equation with the y's only so on y I have I'm going to choose the acceleration direction positive so t is positive what I do is let me rewrite this what I do here is f naught is equal to um, a the second Newton's law and in this case it's centripetal acceleration so we have um, the, the net force it's the tension the positive direction where the acceleration goes minus mg sine because this force is mg sine and equals to m v squared over radius and radius is l so i'm just gonna write l so if i continue solving for t the tension that i need to find i'm gonna have mg sine theta plus m v squared and we just found that v is equal to so this is velocity at v v at p was equal to the square root of 2lg sine theta so we just found this one so if i square that then i have 2lg sine theta and divided by l if i times the oh l l l can be cancelled so i can cancel l this l and i can cancel this l so my tension is equal to um mg sine theta plus another 2 mg sine theta is equal to 3 mg sine theta and that would be your tension for this problem